Hi guys, welcome back to the Pierre Survey experience. Um, we are on episode two. I really, really appreciate all the love and support and follows and ratings on episode one. Um, today, I really wanted to sit down. I'm feeling really sick, but I wanted to sit down and talk about something that we probably have all thought about. Dear people that buy a new iPhone every year. This is really interesting because we're pivoting away from like business factual knowledge and we're talking a little bit more about why do people buy iPhones every single year and I'm guilty of that too. Um, basically, here's the thing. I went on this really deep journey of research and speaking to therapists, psycho psychologists and then just regular folks about every year. I get very excited. For those of you that don't know, the new iPhone debuts every uh, September of every year. It's a public company. It needs to be exciting and make money and announce new things. So they do that. They don't do that because they're actually innovating. Um, but, you know, there's always a few changes to the iPhone. And <laughs> I basically started seeing everyone because I follow a lot of people that work at apple that love apple um like regular people not famous influencers or anything like that and everyone has been purchasing the iphone 15 15 pro 15 pro max and it made me think like that's really interesting because there was a point in my life where i got really annoyed seeing other people unbox their phones but there was a point that i did that and i know i pissed a lot of people off they're like, okay, Pierre, we get it. You have money. You bought the phone. But it wasn't about that. It was honestly like I was so excited when the 12 came out, when the 11 came out, when the 13 came out, I think. Not really. Um, and I would um, I would buy it the same day and I would get it and I would be so excited. And a lot of people would be excited for me too, but I'm sure people were mad. But then I, I went deep into this rabbit hole of why do we care about the financial decisions of other people even if when they don't affect us and what does that mean what does that say about us because honestly as you mature and grow up you start understanding that life is not just about you right so if you really think about it um the fact that it bothers us for another human that's an adult that's making their money to spend their money on an iphone says something about us because it's bothering us right so depends on how you look at it it's really interesting because the first layer to the problem is that okay this person is annoying because they're purchasing a new iphone and i don't like it because i wish i was in their position or i don't value technology and therefore i don't understand why someone is making those purchases regardless both ideas are actually wrong if you care about maturing as an adult. And again, I'm guilty of both sides and actually all three sides. I'm guilty of feeling jealous. I'm guilty of not caring about why people think so much about technology at some points in my life. And I'm even guilty of being that person that buys and posts. The idea of stories on social media, I don't know why we put so many rules about it, but around it, but when stories came out, they started on Snapchat. And growing up in my generation, back in like 2015, whatever, we would um, post anything that we felt comfortable with. And then some people would start posting more what they're eating, what they're doing. And it was a really nice way to check in on your friends and kind of see what they're up to instead of just reading their Facebook posts. So I love that. But then as the years went on, we started, we started making all these rules about what you can and what you can't post. And, oh, this is cringy. Oh, oh you're showing off. But the truth is, if you just bought a new iPhone and you're so excited about it and you want to unbox it and you want to share it with the world on your Instagram story, then that's not a bad thing. It's actually bad for those that judge you for posting an unboxing video because they get annoyed. Like, I get it. You have money or I get it. You like technology. That means that there's something wrong with them because psychologically speaking, when you reach a deep level of self-gratitude, self-fulfillment, self-actualization, you no longer care about how people spend their money. Because the same people that are criticizing you for posting your new iPhone 15 Pro Max on your on your story 
are spending thousands of dollars, thousands of dollars per month or quarter or year eating out and doing things that they consider valuable. So who are you to judge others when you are guilty of doing so many other things that way? But, you know, the funny thing is this isn't about what I think and what he thinks and what she thinks. In today's episode, we're going to dive deep into the trajectory, uh, the trajectory of how an adult grows up and how we achieve self-fulfillment, how there's different stages to where we are in life. And then we're going to even talk to a really, really special person later on in this episode um, that's going to tell us a little bit about his experience as a successful CEO of multiple companies. He sold a company that made over $10 million a year, $10 million a year. He currently runs a very successful company. And you, you'll hear the opinion of a successful entrepreneur CEO that knows how to manage his money on why he always upgrades to the latest iPhone um, and why it's okay to spend your money the way you want it because some people think you're wasting your money. Others believe that you're investing your money in an iPhone that's going to now be your classroom, now going to be your camera, now going to be your memory creator instead of investing money in food that you're quite frankly, it's going to come in and come out and you're only going to remember memories of it, which is true because a lot of people around me don't understand why I love like fine dining and I love eating so much because they're like, oh, don't spend all that money on eating. Let's go buy clothes and eat whatever. But the truth of the matter is dining is really special to me. I value dinner experiences. But if you really think about it, it just kind of goes poof. You're left with only the memory. Whereas if you buy clothes, you can still have the memory of walking, going, trying things on, looking at the mirror and realizing how chubby you've become. Um, Those Zara fitting rooms are horrible. The lighting is horrible. They always make you feel bad. But you can have some good memories there and then you can also have the memory of now having this physical clothing article, article of clothing that you can have forever. So I, I, I get that argument. But going back to the story, I want to pull up this really interesting, um, after having a conversation with a therapist about this, um, she actually told me a little bit about an idea that comes from how we fulfill, uh, it's called the human motivation and Maslow's hierarchy of needs. I'm probably butchering that, but I'm trying my best. Um, And so there's this triangle that I'm going to try to like show somewhere here. All right. And I couldn't find a better quality version, but you get the point. So this is basically supposed to be how we as humans are motivated to achieve certain needs and that some things take a long time to achieve. But basically, these are the things that kind of rule why we do what we do. And it's been, it's really interesting. At the bottom of the pyramid, we have biological and psychological needs, right? Basic life needs, air, food, drinking, shelter, warmth, sex, sleep, health. We all need this as the first need of being humans and achieving something. We need basic life needs, right? I I hope you've accomplished that, everyone that's listening. And I hope for those of you that can accomplish that, to find a way to accomplish it, it's really difficult um, to find basic life needs, especially in this inflation. And it's not a joke. Uh, second, or is it? So second in the pyramid is safety needs, protection, security, order, law, limits, stability. Very good point. Basically, as humans, we first need our basic life needs. We need to eat. We need to have a bed. But then secondly, we need security. Um, protection, order, law. So we want to live somewhere that is safe. We want to feel that we're living in a life that is fair in a city or in a country that treats us and others equally. Uh, We want to feel stability. Stability is so subjective. Stability for some means financial. Stability for others means that we're not living in uncertainty. So that tomorrow I don't have to wake up and constantly be in a battle 
there's a lot of cables um i don't know what to do with them constantly <laughs> constantly be in a battle of not knowing what's happening um and what's next all right and so the third is love and belonging needs so that's family affection relationships and work group really important piece that actually takes quite a lot of time to accomplish so you first graduate from school or if you don't decide to go to school you then you know get relationships friendships uh you build work groups whether those are your colleagues or an environment that you work in your co-working space so third really important basic things needs um, that a lot of people spend a lifetime finding but still then the fourth element is the sound is really off I don't know why it sounds like that hopefully it sounds better for you guys but the fourth is esteem needs who this is when it gets a little deep so that's achievement status responsibility and reputation now we're talking more fundamentally the the way that you live your achievements your status in society or in your school or in your uh industry the responsibilities or the responsibility that you have and then your reputation in your community environment world on whatever platform you're on the next one which is one two three four the fifth one is your cognitive cognitive needs and that uh, involves knowledge meaning and self-awareness so again it sounds very philosophical but basically the higher you are on this hierarchy the more accomplished and actualized you are as a human so the next one would be aesthetic needs beauty balance and form which is really interesting because most people care about aesthetic needs way before they have safety love esteem financial stability even biological and psychological needs by the way so you're in this hierarchy you're supposed to accomplish all these things first and then worry about your beauty balance and form um which i actually really agree with because growing up without getting too deep into it i i came from from a lot of struggle right and and if if you watch my tedx talk on youtube you'll you'll be able to, or or ted.com you'll be able to really understand the full story but i really came from a difficult place as a two times immigrant in my life i spent the first half of my life immigrating to a country and becoming European and then I decided my parents sent me to an American school and then I was like oh you know what this is awesome but my dreams lay in America and not in Europe at least for now and so I decided to become a, an adult immigrant and decided to immigrate to the US um, well non-immigrant because I'm here temporarily but I decided to get my extraordinary visa and, and like live in the US and fulfill a career so it's a two times immigrant story it's really difficult it comes with a lot of instability instability um building new beginnings blah 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 point of the story moral of the story aesthetically i didn't care about a lot of things cuz i had to survive for a lot of other aspects so i didn't really focus so much on clothing and um on just like beauty and 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 you know go taking care of my skin and and fixing my hair and even going to the dentist i had a horrible relationship with the dentist so with time we're working on that and we're establishing our aesthetic needs but this is not about me this is about us as humans so moving forward the last two self actualization personal growth and self fulfillment which is really interesting because we're talking about this hierarchy because when you are at the top which you have personal growth and self fulfillment you honestly don't care how people spend their money in a nice way i don't mind like right now i li- i like to believe that i'm i'm accomplishing that and I, i truly don't mind how you spend your money i i can have an opinion but not a strong one you're more than welcome to spend your money on designer clothes you're more than welcome to spend it on investments on stocks on what knowledge education and it really doesn't bother me because you're an adult i'm an adult we're two separate things and you work hard for your money i hope um not really hard but like you work for your money and you spend your money as you'd like so that that's what what i what, what that's what i was talking about earlier and then lastly at the top of the pyramid of hierarchy um in human needs we have transcendence which is helping others to self actualize and that's really interesting think about this 
when you become an amazing person, when you grow to a massive extent of self-actualization, personal growth, when you've accomplished all your basic needs, um, your reputation, your confidence has, has organically been properly, you know, gained in your life, you now have this self-actualization that you no longer just want to, it's not, it's, you're no longer just living for you. It's not about buying the iPhone 15 pro anymore, but rather it's about how can I help others in their journey of self-actualization, um, improve and change. So it's wonderful. It's honestly really cool. And going back to the story about iPhones, it's very easy for us to have these opinions on what I should do, what he should do, what she should buy, what I should buy. But in short, it really depends on that person's goals and accomplishments and what they want to do. So that's a really interesting um, aspect and lens into this whole conversation. Let's take a little tea break because Lord knows I need it. Again, brought to us by my favorite brand, El Fajer. You're seeing all their new flavors behind me. This is a 21 plus only brand. And love them. Um, I just always want to shout out the brands that mean a lot to me. And let's get back to the story. So, And moving on to the second part of today's episode, we're going to speak to someone really awesome who's very well accomplished, who offers a very great insight into why we should care or not care about how people spend their money. Um, why investing in an iPhone is actually really helpful for your career and or for your business and wherever you might be in life, um, when and when to not upgrade and and spend your money, and then um, a really interesting philosophical insight into this conversation. So we're going to be speaking today to Brian Clayton, who is not just another CEO, he's actually uh, revolutionized many different industries. He's built a business truly from the ground up. And currently he's the CEO of Green Pal, which is a website um, where you can go online, homeowners can connect with local lawn care pros. Um, and they currently have over 200,000 active users. That's more people than the entire population of the island that I grew up in called Curacao. So it's amazing. Um, Let's segue into that interview. Goodbye. CEO and co-founder of a company called GreenPal. And GreenPal is a mobile app uh, platform or marketplace that works like Instacart, DoorDash, Uber, but for lawn care services. So if you're a homeowner, you need to get your grass cut. You just download GreenPal. You pop your address in and somebody comes out and takes care of it for you. I love GreenPal, your company. I actually have a friend that used it before in Florida um, oh, cool. And I, I love how you guys have the website set up. Uh, you know, today's conversation is really interesting, right? We're talking about the new iPhone uh, lineup every year. September comes along. It's funny because a lot of people don't even know this, but a lot of people to this day don't know what, that it comes in September. They think it comes every few months because they're really hard at keeping up what's happening. But the interesting thing about the new iPhone is that, and the new iPhone lineup in general, um, is that it offers a lot of new features that we're familiar with. but the topic is really interesting because it's not about the business of the iPhone, uh, but rather how people decide to spend their money and what they deem important. So like if, if I were to ask you why the iPhone is important to you, can you maybe give me some reasons to why you think you'd upgrade to the iPhone 15 Pro, Pro Max? Totally. I always upgrade every year. I don't even think about it. And, and here's why. Before I started Green Pal, I actually had a landscaping co uh, landscaping company. I, I mowed grass for a living, and I built that up to a to a pretty sizable company, around 150 employees. But one of my first customers was one of the wealthiest people in town, and I'll never forget one time he hired me to do a job, and I, and I didn't have a I didn't have a chainsaw big enough to cut this tree down. And he said, "You always have to have the right tool for the job if you're going to be in business." And he let me borrow his chainsaw and still paid me uh, the, the, the price I quoted him. And that stuck with me, I, even as a kid, all the way up. And I'm 43 years old, 43 years old now. And, and like, I still think about that. Like, you don't skimp and, and, and go cheap on the tools that you need to run your business. And so 
for me today, you know, running Green Pal, I have a team of 43 people all over the world. They're all the time pinging me. We're all the time collaborating and talking about things with the business and working together. And I'm always taking pictures of my travels and putting them on my social media. And I'm always just running the business uh, from my iPhone. And so like, that's this one central tool, the most important tool I have to run this company. And so I'm, I'm not going to go cheap on it. I'm always going to upgrade. And if you, if you look at like the things that we spend our money on, we, we waste so much money on going out to eat. We waste money on clothes, coffee at Starbucks, you name it. If you, if you just like cut some of that stuff I'm out guilty of and, that, just, yeah. Yeah, and just, and just put it on a, on a better device every year, I promise you, you'll come out ahead. And so this year's no, no different, even though the, the improvements are minor to me, they're still worth it, especially around battery life and, 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 and the ability to charge it with a, with a USB-C cord. Um, t- to me, those two things alone are, are worth upgrading. And, and, and the last point I'll make is the battery life. I don't know if this is by design, but like it wears out after a year or two. And so you're going to have to put a new battery in it anyways. You might as well put that towards a new device. I like it. Yeah, because you're right. If, if, you, if you're using it for work, especially your nature of job. And I think at this point, honestly, it's like 65 percent of people. Right. So whether you're working or even social media you you are going to use your phone a lot um so i do agree you know what's funny is that it depends on how you upgrade because doing the finances if a a iphone macbook or any sort of upgrade not just apple is a wonderful tax deduction right because you're, exactly. you're, you're, you're that's number 1 number 2 is depends what on, on what depending on what you do with your phone um I actually sold my iPhone 12 Pro Max when I, when the 13 Pro Max came out and the difference you know was just in the few hundreds so I'm not exactly. actually spending a thousand dollars it depends if you trade in or sell it but if you actually go through the the hassle of selling your last year's iPhone and then upgrade to this year's iPhone you should never be pay you should never be paying more than a few hundred dollars indifference if you choose not to gift it to someone like some years i gift it to my mom or dad because they're they don't need a brand new phone um but yeah if you do that it's it's a great trait so i i think i agree with you now what do you think about entrepreneurs and and individuals who are not entrepreneurs that decide to spend their money in their own ways like you just mentioned people spend their money on starbucks and they spend it on i know so many people that spend it on clothes and you know everyone has a little passion of things they like to spend their money on but what do you think about those that um critique others for like oh you're always buying the new iphone like oh you just posted it on 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 your story or on facebook like um i'm people that get bothered by how others spend their money. Yeah, totally. I think if, if you aren't in business for yourself and it's not the, the hub for the whole business, then it is a little hard to justify. But to your point, it's no harder than justifying uh, a nice dinner these days is started at $100, $200, $300, up to $500. That's just for a dinner, you know, to, 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 as a special occasion. You know, to me, that's a waste of money. And, and so I think, I think it's, it's all a matter of preference. All of us, you know, as consumers like different things and have different preferences. And I think it's, if you're like a technophile and you want to have the new iPhone, just cause that's what you're into, then, then that's no different than spending $500 on a pair of sneakers, which a friend of mine did uh, the other day. And, and, and so I think a lot of this stuff, you know, you, you can cre- critique and shoot holes in any of, of uh, the, 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 the spending habits of the American consumer. But, you know, I, I think it's, it's it, it, however you justify it to yourself, it, it, I think as far as wasting money, the iPhone is, is one of the better ways to waste money rather than, you know, the ways that we normally waste money on clothes and going out to eat and coffees and things like that. I like it. Yeah, it really goes back to budgeting also. Um, and not, you know, again, this isn't a business conversation per se, but I think business crawls into all of our lives, whether we like to admit it or not, regardless of you live in the US and Europe, anywhere, business is kind of the foundation of how we make and spend money. A lot of folks end up, you know, paying a lot of taxes and, and, and spending a lot of money in the wrong way, whether it's on food, um, just because they could have literally invested in, in their career, in their future, in their company. So in simple words, how do you, someone that's, you know, mastered a multi-million dollar company in the past, sold it, is currently also managing a company um, that is of scale. How do you 
put it in simple terms for the regular 23 year old that just graduated from you know a university with a university degree and starting a business or working with for someone how, how do you help them with budgeting and choosing what what to buy and when to buy it how do you know when you can afford something that's a really good question because if you are just getting started and you can't afford a 10 you know a thousand fifteen hundred dollars to two grand for the new phone and and the reality is is if you're just getting started the model the the, the, the 12 or the 13 is probably just as good and so if if you're not at a point where you know you could comfortably waste five hundred dollars on clothes or five hundred dollars on a on a fancy dinner out, then don't upgrade. That's probably a good litmus test. If you can if you can justify wasting money on those other things, then 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 wait and, and upgrade later. But on the on the other hand, this thing can be looked at as a as an investment. For me, this is a I'm in a mobile classroom seven days a week because of this thing. I'm always consuming uh, content from YouTube, podcasts like, like this one. I'm always reading articles on it that, that, that are improving my life in terms of learning new skills and listening to people speak about things that I'm interested in and need, needing to learn about to run my business. And so for me, I don't, I don't look at it as an expense. I look at it as an investment. And, and so while you don't have to invest in a new phone every year if you're just getting started, you do need to keep it current and you do need to keep it, you do need to keep it uh, updated because even if it's a little bit faster, that's costing you money. It's, 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 it's costing you time. And, and uh, I would, I would argue that you almost can't waste money on, on upgrading your iPhone versus other ways we waste money. Oof, that's such a great statement. You can't waste your money. You can't, you, you almost can't waste your money if you're spending it on, upgrading your your tech it's so true you know i actually my current phone we can also always find ways to justify why we need a new phone too but but in in plain words you know i a lot of the times the storage on my iphone and its, and its speed has delayed me if you connect your iphone to your carplay um the carplay is actually running from your phone not from your car the maps just froze and i was late to my meeting because of that because my exactly. phone was slow. That's one. Number two is um, I have this off. I don't know if you know this feature, like offload unused apps. It can save a lot of storage. So it would basically keep the app, but offload it. And you'd have to redownload it if you're not using it. A lot of times I'd need something urgently and it wouldn't be there. Um, a lot of people that run their own businesses and need to keep their track of their mileage um, for tax deductions or whatever it is that you keep your miles for. Um, those apps just offloaded on their own for me. So yeah, you're basically, you are losing by not having that speed, by not having that battery to take a call from a client. So I, I think this is a really interesting conversation. Um, but your closing remarks on what you think would be uh, your thoughts on others. Do you think that maybe when we see people upgrading and it bothers us, like, oh, he's always upgrading or she's always upgrading. What do you think about people that have opinions on how others spend their money. It's a, it's a really good point. This is a weird thing. You're a little younger than me, so you probably don't remember this, but I remember when gadgets became a status symbol. These didn't used to be a status symbol uh, back in 2000, 2001, 2002. Your phone, nobody gave a crap what phone you had. You had the Nokia phone and, and that was it. And then like the Motorola StarTac came out and then a new StarTac every year. And, and then it was like kind of a status symbol to, to have the new StarTac. And, and then you started seeing like in, in rap videos and stuff, the, I remember, I can't remember if it was Nelly or somebody had the new Palm Trio and that was a big screen. And, 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 it, was, and it was like in the video. And then you started seeing that the phone is is a status symbol and and uh there's a, a jay-z line i can't remember what song he says you know i go around the world and, and the uh, blackberry always connects and and so that was a that was a flex yeah yeah that was a flex back in 2005 right and so at some point 
these gadgets uh, became a status symbol. And so I get that. I, I, I totally get that. Um, and, and I can understand how, how some people might think that that's flexing. Like I just bought the new iPhone 15. It's not really that much better. And, and so I'm trying to show it as like a status symbol. And so I, I understand that, but I will say this, especially when, when, when the cameras changed and you showed up to a meeting for an investor meeting or something, and you had the, you had the one little camera or the two yeah, people might look at you a little different. Like, oh, why isn't, you know, has, why isn't he upgraded his phone? So, and I think in the new, can the we new... trust his technology? Like, can we trust that he's up to date with his technology? If he, if he still has a phone from three, four years ago. Yeah. That, that's a great point that you're, that you're making. Yeah. It's like, it's, it's like rolling in there with a cheap suit or, or some, or, you know, some, some, something else that's fugazi about you, you know, and I hate, I hate these, these status symbols, but it, it's a real thing. And, this new 15, I think, has got is has got the button on the side rather than the switch. So there's gonna be there's gonna be t- tells, right? And so this is something that you should consider uh, as you as you know you're thinking about upgrading or maybe judging others uh, for upgrading or not. Um, it's a weird thing to be aware of. You know, I would say get the new iPhone, but that's one percent of it. The other ninety nine percent of it is what you do with it. Um, don't 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 doom scroll on TikTok. Get on YouTube. Listen to some content that that's going to help you get to where you're trying to go in life. Make that phone create your your make that phone turn your car into a mobile classroom. Let it teach you things you don't know. Let it teach you the skills that you need to get to where you're trying to go. So oh, good. Honestly, it's amazing because I, I talk to people all the time, and you know what they they tell me, and this is for everyone watching. You know, you always wonder why you're stuck. And there's always a way to make an excuse. That's why I just said earlier, we can make an excuse to why we need a new iPhone and we can make a new excuse to why we don't need a new iPhone. We can make an excuse for everything. But the truth is, if you're sitting down and you have a goal, now with all the accessibility that we have, there's no reason why you can't do it. We're doing this interview. No excuse. You know, online, we could make the excuse, oh, Brian is not here in my city. I'm not in Brian's city. We can make it. No excuse. No excuse. So basically, people used to make it happen in 1968. People made it happen in 2014. People are making it happen now. Basically, we're saying use the resources around you and know that they're accessible if you do have ambitions of any sort. Your ambition doesn't really have to be entrepreneurial, right? It could be. It could be that you want to get into med school. It could be that you're trying to get scholarships. Exactly. It could be that you want to build a business, grow a business, whatever whatever it might be. But I think the conversation really revolved around the last few words that you mentioned were so good. It's not a, the, the new iPhone is the 1%. Yeah. The other 99% is what you do with that new iPhone. And I think judging others is also really interesting. It, it kind of, this episode we've discussed already how, um, It really goes into detail. It's a self-reflection. If you look at someone and how they spend their money, it means that there's something in your way of doing things that needs work because you care so much about how Brian or how Pierre spend their money instead of saying, oh, good for them. Next. Exactly. You know, because there's a self-fulfillment that isn't there. That's exactly right. I totally agree. All right, guys. I hope you enjoyed that. Um, This wraps it up for today's episode. I really want to thank you for all the support. Thank you for following the Pierce to Bay experience. I would just invite you to please share this with a friend and come back every Thursday for new episodes for now and then mini episodes uh, on other surprise bonus days. With that being said, have a wonderful day and remember that you can buy the iPhone 15, 15 Pro, 15 Pro Max if you want to. And no one should judge you for how you decide to spend your money. And, you know, this is this is a lesson for all of us. It's a lesson for me to not judge others, but it's also a lesson for me to invest and move my money that I work for as I'd like without caring about the judgment of others. Have a good day. See you soon. Bye.